All right, what's up guys? Toasty here, Get Burnt, and today I'm going to be talking more about Dragon Ball Xenoverse, and today I'm going to be doing somewhat of a special video, kind of comparing the Xenoverse story mode to the previous Dragon Ball Z game story modes. Now, obviously we do not have all of the information about Dragon Ball Xenoverse's story mode, we only know a few minute details, obviously we got a lot more of a fill-in from the trailer itself, so I'm deciding that I want to actually see how many of you agree with me on this, and I want to see how many of you don't. So I'm going to be mainly comparing it with Budokai Tenkaichi 3 and Budokai 3 because those are probably the top contenders for... Actually, no. I'm going to say BT2. BT2 to Budok and Budokai 3 and to Xenoverse. Mainly because BT2, without a doubt, I don't think anyone could really argue, has a better story mode than Budokai Tenkaichi 3. That I'm just saying that <laughs> that's pretty much... I, I don't think that anyone could really argue with that. So I'm going to be comparing these story modes and what I really think about them. Alright, so Budokai 3 story mode, I'm just going to start this off really quick. Budokai 3 story mode, I honestly, I like the fact that you can fly around the entire world of Dragon Ball Z. I like I like that, that's cool. You can fly around Namek and you can fly around wherever you go. But the thing is, is that I, I dislike the way that they handled all of the cutscenes, or by cutscenes I mean all of the splash art that they put on screen. I liked it a lot more like Budokai 1 obviously when they had all the cutscenes and it actually felt more like the show. Now obviously in Budokai 3 they were covering a lot more content than they were in Budokai 1 because Budokai 1 as you uh, most of you most likely know went from the beginning of the Saiyan Saga to the end of the Cell Saga but it did not go any farther than that. But for Budokai 3 it was going from the start of the Saiyan Saga all the way to technically GT but GT was kind of just like things that were off the map but we'll just say to the end of Dragon Ball Z aka the end um where he was fighting Oop so the uh, the last tournament saga so I, I guess that I could say that you know since that happened it most likely shouldn't be hated on or disliked that much for that Although I do not like how they didn't have a lot of the dialogue that was said wasn't actually said by any characters. It was just written out for you to say. Now, I, obviously, I, I, <laughs> there was a lot of dialogue, so I, I understand that a lot of you are going to be uh, saying that Budokai 3s is awesome. I, I'm just saying that for my personal enjoyment, that was not something that really interested me a lot about the story mode. For me, I liked it a lot more like BT2 where it had models going around and... It had um, actual voice acting for the models and everything like that. It was cool. BT2 may have been a little bit stiff in the model department, though, obviously, not being very uh, advanced with its models. Like, BT3 did a little bit better with that. But I will say that both BT2 and Budokai 3, in their own rights, did really well as story modes. Now, for Xenoverse. So, the most that we know about Xenoverse is that our character is not Goku. The main character is not Goku. It is our main created character. A lot of you were kind of wondering if it was a different mode or something, or if there's like two story modes, one with your created character and one with the normal Dragon Ball Z storyline. All right, I'm going to settle this right now. There is no regular story mode for Dragon Ball Z in Xenoverse. Now, before anyone flips, which I hope you wouldn't, it, this for me, this is something of a savior. Now, for the last few Dims games, excluding Burst Limit, because, you know, First one was the only one that really did still go with the normal Dragon Ball Z storyline. Shin Budokai and Shin Budokai Another World both decided to take creative twists on the actual story of Dragon Ball Z in certain ways to make it more interesting for the person who's actually playing the games, make it a new experience. Me, myself, I played Shin Budokai and Shin Budokai Another Road on stream a few months ago, or like two months ago, I would assume. And it's a really refreshing experience. If you haven't played those games, they're on the PSP and they are really, they should be cheaper, at least I would assume. And they're really good games. I i think that that way of approaching Dragon Ball Z games is the best way. Because it's not like the Naruto games where the Naruto story was still going on while the actual uh, anime, or not anime, the manga was actually being made. It's not like the game was just trying to follow right behind it. Dragon Ball Z has been over for almost 20 years now we have seen the story mode in every single way or at least that's what i think i think we've seen the story mode in pretty much every single way they could do it we've seen it as a board game we've seen it as a cutscene heavy game like budokai 1 or if you want to be more frank about a bt3 we've seen it like uh, even more in hd like that for burst limit and then raging blast 1 we we've seen it even in like Ultimate Tenkaichi, we've seen the same story mode so many times, and I honestly am getting tired of it. I it's 
tw it's been 20 years since the series has technically ended that we do not need to see the same way of them storytelling the same story again i i know they're dragon ball z games they should be telling the story of dragon ball z but really is there being a difference in the new game for their actually having a twist on it to where you create your own character and they are the hero of Dragon Ball Z and things actually act out differently. You have different villains and everything in DBZ changes around your hero instead of Goku. Is that really so bad? I mean, I honestly... For me, when I first heard that, I was ecstatic. I was happy because I thought, finally, we're not getting the same Dragon Ball Z story over and over and over again. If I wanted to play the story mode of Dragon Ball Z to relive Dragon Ball Z itself, I would go and play one of the other games. I honestly don't think that we need any more games that just tell the Dragon Ball Z story. Obviously, for something like Naruto, that's fine, because Naruto just ended. It's it's still not even been fully done in game form. But for Dragon Ball Z, we've had the entirety of both Dragon Ball technically Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and Dragon Ball GT done. We, even the movies in the Budokai Tenkaichi games, we have had, we've seen this, even, we've even seen side stories in like Raging Blast 1 and all that stuff, made up stories in that, like Bardock meeting Goku, Goten, and Gohan. We've seen almost everything we need to see about Dragon Ball Z's or a normal origin story. I honestly don't think that we need to see it any more times from now on. I think that for the future of DBZ games, including Xenoverse, I think that this sort of approach is the correct one. I think that having different story modes that maybe put a little bit of a twist on the original Dragon Ball Z story is a better way of going at it than just a normal DBZ story with the same characters, the same events, the same stuff happening that we've all seen for so many years. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. I know it really wasn't a technical comparison video of every single thing comparing, but I really wanted to just talk about the story modes in Dragon Ball Z games in general, because a lot of people are actually saying things about the story mode, saying that they don't think that some elements are that good, or they say things are not like Budokai 3 or Budokai Tenkaichi, where it's just telling the story, and some people are actually saying they don't like that. Yeah, I, I actually go around on YouTube a lot and see a lot of Xenoverse videos and a lot of people saying that, so, it's kind of weird and I don't really understand it, but if you feel that way, please don't be afraid to comment down in the comment section down below. I, I'll try and make sure that you don't get shunned just for your opinion. I honestly just, in my personal opinion, don't think that we need to see Dragon Ball Z games do the same Dragon Ball Z story over and over and over again anymore. But that's just it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you were able to stick through all of this, then make sure to hit that like button if you really did enjoy it. And that is it for me. If you guys don't know me, my name is Toasty. I upload a bunch of Dragon Ball Z and Naruto-related videos about the new games, as well as some speculation on maybe what new games will be releasing after a certain game or anything else around that topic. I also make a bunch of videos with YouTubers like Ryan Style. Uh, I make videos with Thundershot as well. I make videos with pretty much every other DBZ YouTuber. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys like the content, then make sure to subscribe down below. And don't forget to like the video because it really helps my channel out and I really appreciate all your support. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys later. Peace out.